Shalom, shalom, greetings from Tanzania. The Indian Ocean, greetings from Eden. Greetings from the Promised Land. Greetings, blessings, and the favor of the Most High. So today I want to share with you something supernatural. And you know, I'm just gonna get into it. I'm not gonna preface it a lot because I have a lot to share. And this message is crucial in this season because this is going to be your key to not lacking in the famine. This is going to be the key to walking in obedience in your life right now. And this is going to be the key to making sure the Most High's will is fulfilled in your life right now. So I've been in Tanzania for two years now. I, if you guys don't know, I'm a writer, I'm an author, I'm a poet, I write all kinds of things. I write for marketing. I literally write everything, every single thing you can think of. I've probably written it. And so as a child, I always knew I was a writer, right? And I want you to think back with me to your childhood and what you were naturally good at. So you can replace yours for artist, illustrator, um, gardener, um, builder, whatever that thing is for you and walk with me here. So I was always a writer in my childhood from age maybe eight years old, maybe seven, as long as I can remember. Reading stories, then writing, reading, writing, that's everything I love to do. I would journal, and my highest grades were always in writing, right? But when I got, let's say out of high school, when I got out of high school, I stopped because I had this idea in my mind that thanks to indoctrination. But I had this idea in my mind that the only way to make money was if I became a nurse and worked in healthcare and got a bachelor's and a master's, then maybe got a doctorate and did all these things to become somebody's employee and to not be employed or dispatched by the most high. Not to say that people in healthcare aren't dispatched by the Most High, but what I'm saying instead is that a lot of times our destinies are swapped and switched out early in childhood when our gifts are not nurtured. And so with that, for you it may be... My children are speaking to me, y'all. Work with me here. But um, for you, it may be, like I said, you may be an illustrator. My husband's an illustrator. Um, we wrote a book together. I wrote it. He illustrated it. For you, it could be gardening. What else? Y'all name your talents down below. But, um, hey guys, I'm doing a video right now. You have to go back inside. Go inside. I made you some ice cream, remember? So if you want it, we need to listen. Inside the house, not out here. This is what you do when you're a homeschool mom, y'all. That's, that's another gift, but we're not talking about that right now. Um, yeah. So I've been on this journey here in Tanzania, and it has included the supernatural ability or divinity in my writing or in your talent, um, because everyone has talents. Jazz, Jazlyn, inside the house. Inside the house, please. Nope, I said inside the house. So many distractions, y'all. <laughs> Children. Okay. Anyway. Yes, the, the process of finding your divinity and finding the thing inside of you that the Most High is trying to pull out because what the world has done, and it's on purpose. Never think for it. For an instance that it's not on purpose. It's 100% on purpose that they've allowed you and um, molded you so that you would forget what your talents are. So you wouldn't dig deep into those. I'm talking to the artists. I'm talking to the creatives. I'm talking to the innovators. I'm talking to the people that used to like to do art and they didn't do it anymore. I'm talking to the people that you felt like you were meant to do something, but you would get critiqued on it in a way that was not in alignment with the Most High's word. I'm talking to you. And so what the Most High has showed me on this journey, one and getting to Africa and to exiting Babylon and escaping America and all these things, it was really, really supernatural because I had quit my job six years ago and I never went back. 
someone at my old job told me, she was like, you're an excellent writer because I had started my blog because after high school and during college, I'm like, man, I used to really love to write for fun. I need to get back into that. And so she was basically like, wow, you're an excellent writer. Do you know you can get paid for this, right? And I still remember her. Joy, if you're watching, hey, girl. Anyway, um, yeah. And so I just started researching freelance writing. What I need you to understand from this is whatever your gift is, whatever your skill is, it's a natural ability. It may not be perfect right now, but you just need to refine it. So that's what I did during that time. I refined it. I did research. I took courses. I can't tell you how many courses I've read, books, how many courses I've taken and books I've read on writing, marketing, creativity, all of these things. Because just like anything else, just as a farmer is diligent in farming and planting the seed and finding fertilizer and pulling up weeds and doing all these things, we have to do the same things with our talents that are from the most high. And now I want to take a turn a little bit so that you understand the seriousness of it. A lot of people ask us how we stay in Africa, how we stay in Tanzania so long, how we have money abroad, how just how all these things and the supernatural yet simple, wonderful, praise the most high answer is that we found our divinity, that we found the most high Yah, Yahusha, we found him inside of us. And so when you're tapping into abundance like that, when you're tapping into a well that never runs dry, literally, I'm telling you, when you're tapping into the most high like that, the only fruit that you can bear is good fruit, fruit that's functional, because to be good to the Hebrew isn't just to look good and to smell good, but it has to actually be functional. It has to be something that makes life work, right? Because the Most High created the world and he saw that it was good. Not just that it looked nice, but he saw that the plants were functioning the way he intended them to. The sun was shining the way he wanted it to. The moon was shining. But what happens if the sun doesn't shine? What happens if the plants don't bear fruit? What happens if we just miss out on our talents? We become dormant because if you don't nurture it and water it, it's literally just going to sit there and it's going to rot. And wouldn't that be the most heartbreaking thing that can happen to you? Like seriously, one of the most heartbreaking things. And that's why I think a lot of artists and creatives and these people they end up being like depressed and like all these things coming over them. And it's because they're not using their gift, which means they're in disobedience, which means they lack protection from the most high because they're not doing the thing that they're called to be doing. And so I want you to ponder on that today. If you have to replay this over, replay it over until it soaks into your spirit, because this is so real right now. Because we have, and I'm talking to the people that have the repentance, right? That believe in Yahusha, the Messiah, some call Jesus. They believe in him. They've turned from their sins and stuff still isn't working. And you have to do the inner work. And the inner work is that you have to hear from the Most High. And he's speaking inside of you and he's speaking in your mind and he's speaking to you every day. But you probably have negative beliefs. You're probably listening to too many people around you. They can be parents, they can be cousins, they can be friends, they can be strangers, they can be anybody that you're listening to more than the most high, and that's getting you out of obedience. One scripture that just popped into mind as I'm saying that, don't think, how do I want to say this? Don't think that people that you're close to cannot act as an adversary towards the most high in you. What I mean by that is if we go to, um, I believe it's in the book of Matthew, it's in one of the four Gospels, where Yahushua, who some call Jesus, he's going to be crucified, and his disciple, one of his favorite disciples, Peter, he's like, oh no, master, not you. I'll take out my sword and we can, you know, we can kill these people right now. Like, you, you don't have to be crucified. And Yahushua, he didn't like water down anything. He didn't beat around the bush. He said... I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke you, adversary, because it's that serious. It's really that serious in this season. You have to tap into what your gift is. You have to tap into who the Most High wants you to be, and you have to do it fearlessly.
for me as a writer, I'll keep writing. Um, I have just a whole collection of books in my mind, in my notes, y'all. It's great. Praise the Most High. Um, you'll see more of them soon. If you're interested in any of the books that my husband and I have created so far, Wake Up Jacob is at the link in the description. It's a children's book. And then I wrote a book on grief after my dad died. That was my first book. Um, it's like a short chapter book. It's an ebook. That's at the link in the description as well. But they're both ebooks in America. If you're in Tanzania, you can get the hard copy of Wake Up Jacob, though. But um, yeah, that's what I want to leave you with today. I want you to also be encouraged and I want you to be relentless about obedience because obedience is better than sacrifice. And so that's what the Most High has left me with. If you need tangible action tips right now, that just came to my mind. If you need tangible steps to find your creativity, find your thing, find your calling in the Most High, sit down. Read the Bible first. Start there. Read the Bible. Seriously. Um, pick any chapter you want. Just read it and dig in because the Most High has something for you there and he'll lead you to that. And start writing things that you used to love to do that you forgot about. Go back to childhood and remember the things that you loved to do, the things that made you smile. Even if people said you were bad at it, then think about all the negative responses you got about that thing, whether it was your old art teacher, your cousin, your friend that wasn't really your friend or, you know, whoever it was. Write those things down, cross them out and rebuke them, throw them in the trash because those are not the most high in you. Though That's the enemy speaking through people and get back to what you were created for. It's time for that because this is your key to not lacking during the famine in the world. You're literally not going to lack. You, the Most High, is not going to hold back any good thing from you because you are in obedience according to Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 through 14. Shalom.